Today we're jumping back into one of the most game-changing 3D tools for designers, or more specifically, non-3D designers like myself. And this video follows on from, well, you can think of it as part one, which was a crash course introduction to getting started with Spline, and I'll link that on screen if you'd like to check it out, up here somewhere. However, in this video, we're going to start with the 3D icon and transform this into an animated design concept for a fictional app. And we'll take a look at some of the other new features as well, including particles a bit later on, which, spoiler, are a lot of fun indeed. So here's the 3D icon that I created in the previous video, and now I'm going to set up the frame, and this is going to be sized for an iPhone device. So let's go for 393 by 852. Now let's go and add a rectangle, and we can click and drag to adjust the size, or we can just go and enter the X and Y values on the right hand side. So again, I'm gonna enter 393 and 852, and if I press S on the keyboard, it will center the selected object in the center of the frame. Now you can click the eye icon here if you don't want the frame visible when working, which can sometimes be easier. And if I hold Alt or Option and click to rotate this round, you can see the icon is cutting into the background. And if I group this again, I get a new set of axes and I can pull this out and up on the Z and Y axes. And if I click the blue widget here, it will snap back to that front on view, which of course for UI design makes life much easier. Now with the rectangle selected, I want to make sure that this isn't receiving any shadows. And now let's add another rectangle and this is going to be for a button. So I can drag this out or I can enter the size manually on the right. But first up actually, let's give this a nice tasty color. We'll go FF412D. There we go, a nice punchy orange. And let's enter the size there, 150 by 60. And we'll go for, I think 12 on the corner radius. And then I can use the control points here to adjust the position. But of course it is a button, and what is a button without text? Well, definitely not a button. So let's click somewhere and we can start typing some text. We can also add text from the right hand side. So let's go for next tip. And we can choose a font and adjust the font properties from here as well. And essentially this app concept is going to be a random tip generator for design software. And I think the app will make a bit more sense as the design progresses. Right now let's adjust the position of the button text and we'll change the size. And of course we're going to make this white. There we go, nice bit of contrast. And we can of course select both of these and move them together. And we can also press Command or Control D to duplicate the selected objects. And this is going to be another button on the left. And let's change the text to Tutorial. Now instead of a solid fill, I'm going to change this to Outline. And let's set the width to two. There we go, it's already set to two. And I want the outline or border to be white. Now I need to add a triangle which is going to act as a play icon. So let's add that there. And again, I'm going to change this to outline and make sure the properties are the same. So we have a width of two and white again is the color. Now I'm going to need to rotate this 90 degrees and then move this down and position this within the button. I might also need to make this a pinch smaller. There we go, that's a bit better. Let's nudge everything along slightly. Uh, just a bit more to the right. There we go, nice. Right, now let's duplicate this again and we'll move this up. This is going to be the tool name. So let's type eyedropper tool with the keyboard shortcut I. And uh, it's a bit squished, so let's extend that text box. And again, I'm going to duplicate this and move it down. And this is going to be where the app name will go. And now it's time to import an icon and I'm going to select SVG. Yes, you can do this and it's awesome. And I'm going to select the eyedropper SVG. This is basically a 2D icon and uh, it's positioned it back there. So let's bring that forward and I'm going to increase the scale as well. So let's lock this and I'm gonna go for 1.5 just to make it a bit bigger. Let's switch back to that front view and I can now move this into position. And I can actually select this button as well and use the align to option to align that on the X axis so everything lines up perfectly. Right, now I'm going to be a perfectionist for a moment and just adjust the spacing, line everything up, you know, a bit of housekeeping. There we go, much better. Now I'm going to duplicate the smaller text and move this to the left and then increase the text box size. And this is going to be where I'm going to add a description of the tool. So with the text selected, let's type in a brief description of the eyedropper tool. Now those lines are looking a bit close, so I'm going to space them apart a little bit more. And I'm also going to change the opacity to about 50%. Right, now with the main background selected, I'm going to change color to depth. And this is a great way to add a gradient. So let's hide the lighting, open up depth, 
and we'll change the gradient type to linear first of all, just so it runs in a straight line. And I'm also going to adjust it so it runs from top to bottom. And let's extend these out to the edges. And then I can double click each of the colors and I can add a different color. So for this first one, 131921, this is a very dark color. And then for the other color, I'm going to click here and type 2D 3A 4D. So like a lighter blue. And now a tiny bit more perfectionism. Ah, that's better. Okay, so that's one done. Now let's create the second tooltip that will be part of the animation. So rather than recreate it, I'm just going to duplicate all of this and move it out to the right. And we're going to change this to the zoom tool. And of course, being a different tool, it will need a new description. And of course, it will need a new icon as well. So let's go to open, select SVG. And I've got the zoom icon here. And just like before, I'm going to rotate the camera. I'm going to scale it by 1.5. And then I'm going to use the align tools to line this up in exactly the same position as the other icon. We're all about precision here. And as you can see, they're now overlapping. And I can delete the other icon, leaving just the zoom tool icon. Right, let's switch back to that front view. And I'm now going to add a cylinder. Now let's extend this out. This is going to be a handle for a 3D magnifying glass. And I can duplicate this, move it up rotate it 90 degrees. We might need to scale that up as well. So let's, uh, oh, not like that. <laughs> Make sure you check the lock so it constrains the width and height. There we go. And if I switch to a side on view, let's, uh, let's scale that handle down and move that up so it connects to the magnifying glass. And with that top cylinder selected, I can duplicate this. And then I can scale this along the Y axis and then scale it down holding shift so it sits in the center. And with both cylinders selected, I can use a Boolean modifier, click this icon here, and it will knock out that center cylinder from the other one. Now I'm going to duplicate that center cylinder and move it outside of the Boolean group. And this is going to be used for the glass on the magnifying glass, of course. Let's scale that down on the Y axis and I can right click on the glass on the eyedropper tool, go copy material, then select the glass, right click and paste material. And this just saves me having to recreate it all over again. So let's do the same for the orange plastic and paste that onto the other parts of the magnifying glass. There we go, just like that. Now it is, uh, it is quite large, so I'm going to take a second just to fine tune this and adjust the size so they're a bit more similar to each other. Right, very good. Now let's move this over here, nudge this up into position, and I'm also going to rotate this at a similar 30, 35 degree angle. There we go. Okay, second tooltip done. Now let's actually add the animation. Right, so to make this much less complicated, first of all, I'm going to select all of the eyedropper tool elements, and I'm going to group these together, and I'm going to call this tool one. Now let's do the same for the zoom tool. So I'm going to drag over everything, group it together and call this tool two. Now let's select both of these groups, group these together, and I'm going to call this animation. So now I can move both tool tips together and get an idea for how this sliding animation will look. So with the animation group selected, I'm going to add a new state. The base state is where it starts and the second one is going to be where it ends. So let's move this over to the second tool. And now I need to define a trigger for this animation. So let's select the orange button and go to events. And you can see by default, it's on start. I'm going to change this to mouse down. And there's a few different options for the mode, but for now I'm going to select repeat each time. Now we need to add an action. So let's select transition. And if we expand this down, you can see it will list the states that we created before, but unfortunately they're not there. And that's because the target needs to be set to the animation group. So let's go up here and change this to animation. Remember that's the group that we applied those two different states to. And now with that selected, I've got my base state, but I've also got my second state here as well. So I think it's probably a good idea to test this and just check it's working. So oh, if you get this happen, click the X. What I would recommend doing is clicking on the workspace and just turning on your frame and I'm going to zoom out to 100%. Select that background rectangle and press S to center it in the frame. It's a bit weird at first playing with cameras, but you do get used to it. Okay, let's try and play that again. There we go. And if I click this, 
There you go, you can see it slides to the next tool. Okay, so it's working, that's a good start. Let's come out of that preview. And there's only one more change I want to make, and that is to the easing. I'm going to select spring, just because I quite like this one. And I get a few different settings. I might bump the damping up to 20, but don't worry about this too much for now. And let's see how this spring easing looks. Ooh, nice. And if I had more tools and tool tips, we could of course keep this going, but well, I've only got two at the moment. So it's looking pretty good. However, I did forget one thing and that is animating the icons so they continuously spin. I know, bad Dan. Right, so to do this, it's super simple. I'm going to select the group for this first tool, go to states. And of course we've got the base state here, which we leave alone. And the second state, I'm going to rotate this on the Y axis so it spins. And I'm going to set this value to 360, which is 360 degrees. Now I need to also add an event to this and you can see it set to start by default, which is great. And I'm going to add a transition. And then if I go down here, I can choose the base state for number one and that second state where we rotated it 360 degrees for number two. I'm going to make this animation play for five seconds. And if I set the easing to linear, it will spin at a constant speed. So basically it will loop perfectly. And speaking of loop, I need to set this to infinite so it will spin forever. So let's click play. And uh, oh, I've done that again. Okay, let's set the zoom to 100%. There we go, come on Dan. And there you go, you can see it spins in a 360 degree motion continuously. Now to copy this to the other tool, it's super simple. Just select it, create those two different states again. And now we can select the first tool and we can actually copy the events from this one and paste them on the second tool. However, there is one thing we need to change. So if we open up the event, the target needs to be the zoom tool. So just make sure you change it and then click play. And if we click next tip, they both will continuously keep spinning. Okay, so we've designed an app and we've added a quick animation. And to be honest, this is really just scratching the surface of what is actually possible with Spline. For example, you could enhance the onboarding process for an app with some animated 3D graphics, for example, or you could create characters or avatars and bring them to life with a bit of, a bit of cheeky animation. That's always fun. Or you could have an entire scene respond to a user's finger swipes and cursor movement. I mean, just check out the awesome stuff created by the Spline community. It's incredibly exciting and it will give you a taste of what is actually possible. And the best part is that exporting to these many different formats or even to iOS is super simple. So once you're done, just go up to export at the top and from the left, you can choose the type. And there's also some play settings as well. So because I'm designing an app, I don't want people to be able to orbit, pan and zoom everything. So I've disabled that here. And of course, depending on the export type, you will get relevant options. So here we've got embed for iOS. And this is great if you'd like to embed your spline scene into an existing Xcode project. And perhaps you'd like to animate it with Swift UI instead. As you can see, there's a bunch of features that are supported and some that will be coming soon. And similarly, we have the app generation, which is also in beta and you can give the app a name, you can upload an app icon, etc. And this option will generate a complete Xcode project from scratch based on your scene in Spline. So let's pretend I've done everything and click generate. Again, not all the features are there right now and more are being rolled out. And give it a minute and Spline will do its thing and it will download this as a zip folder. But there's also one more that is especially interesting and that is being able to export to Vision OS, which runs on Apple's new VR headset. Now, I haven't experienced this VR device yet, but there is an app called Spline Mirror, whereby you can experience your 3D content made in Spline spatially on the Apple Vision Pro. So if you're designing for iOS or Vision OS, there's a ton of different options here when it comes to exporting. Okay, back to the Xcode app. Let's double click this zip folder. And then if we open up this folder, you can see there is a tool app Xcode project. Let's open this up. Now I'm not a developer and I don't use Xcode, so I'm not gonna play around too much. But if you do know what you're doing, you can click on the play icon and get a preview of your app on an iPhone. However, like I said, I'm not an avid Xcode user. So here is a sample project so you can see the iPhone preview in action. And lastly, I want to wrap up with another new feature that is just a ton of fun to play with, and that is particles. Oh, these are so much fun. Okay, so let's click the plus icon and go to particle emitter. And to start with, it will look something like this. Now, first up, we've got color A and color B. We can select two different colors, or you could make these the same color. Let's go from an orange into like a, 
a light beige, a light beige, a beige, something like this, that looks good. Now by default, these blend together so it goes from the orange to the beige, or you can choose random and they will just spawn random colors. You can adjust the size and the rotation as well. You've also got something called the birth rate. This is the rate at which new particles will be born. So if you crank this up, you're gonna get lots more particles a lot quicker. And the lifetime is the number of seconds that these particles will hang around for before disappearing. Now the alpha fade dropdown handles how they fade in or out or if I select constant, there will be no fade whatsoever. Or if we choose ease in out, particles will fade in and they will also fade out. And we get a similar drop down for the size. So if we select constant, all of the particles will be the exact same size. So definitely have a play around with these settings to get familiar. Next, we've got the speed. That's, uh, that's pretty self-explanatory. And we can choose the shape of the object that is emitting these particles. So let's go for a sphere. And we can, of course, adjust the size. Uh, oh, that skews it out of shape. Let's undo that, click the padlock icon, and we can use that to make it larger or smaller. Now, next, we've got gravity. So we could reduce the gravity, and these will become a bit slower and a bit more floaty or we could go with a negative value and these will start falling down. But let's go ahead and change that back to 0.2 for now. Okay, collider, we'll come back to that in a moment. Okay, particle noise, there's a few more settings here to adjust the appearance of the particles. Let's leave those alone for now. Next, let's take a look at particle randomness. So here we can adjust the randomness of the scale, rotation, and the mass, which is the weight. And like everything else, playing around with the sliders updates the preview in real time. Okay, so that's a quick introduction to how particles actually work, but now let's use them to make something a little bit more creative. Okay, so let's select the particle emitter. Here's one I made earlier. And now I'm going to select the type tool and I'm going to click and type a word. That word is of course going to be particles. How predictable, Dan. Now let's scale that up. Oh, bit of wrapping there. Let's adjust that text box and center this and pop it in the middle. There we go. Now, this is the fun bit. Let's select the particle emitter. And if we scroll down on the right, underneath the shape, we can choose custom object. And then underneath object, we can select the text. And if we hide the text layer itself, those delicious particles embody the shape of the text. How cool is that? And this is still fully customizable. Right, now let's go one step further and add a particle force. And with this selected on the right hand side, you can adjust the properties like the shape. So let's change that to sphere and you can also adjust the size. And to show you how this works, if I select the force and move it around, you can see wherever I move it, it then affects the particles around it. And this is just like one of a million different ways you can use emitters and forces together. So let's go and add an event and we're going to set this to follow. And you can play around with the settings here. I might just increase the damping up to five, but this of course is a personal preference. Right, let's click play. And if we move the cursor around, you can see the particle force is following the cursor. So wherever I move the cursor, that force is going to affect the particles. And there we go. That is how to design an app with Spline, animate it, and if you're feeling especially adventurous, even export it to iOS or Vision OS. So thank you once again to Spline for sponsoring this video. And uh, to be quite honest with you, thank you for creating such a useful product. Like it's become my go-to for 3D graphics now, and it's just made my life so much easier as a non-3D person. So uh, yeah, cheers. Anyway, that's it from me. Take care, and I'll see you next time.